This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've been using GoodNotes for years now, and there's just so much that you can do with the app. In this video, I'm sharing about all the creative ways you can use GoodNotes for digital planning. Hey there, if you're new around here, I'm Kirsten, but if you wanna be BFFs, you can call me Kay, and I make videos weekly on digital planning, iPad creativity, and aesthetic tech in what I hope is a very down-to-earth kind of way. GoodNotes is a one-time paid app available to iOS users. You can get it on your iPad, Mac, or even your phone, and anything you load up and use in GoodNotes will sync across devices if you have it enabled and sign in under the same iCloud account. GoodNotes was intended for and is mostly used for note-taking, but it's become a hugely popular digital planning option to click between hyperlinked PDF planners designed to look and function like planners. There's a lot more than what meets the eye, so let's jump into creative ways to use GoodNotes. As previously mentioned, digital planners are just PDF files with embedded hyperlinks allowing you to click between months, weeks, or days to plan. GoodNotes is a PDF markup app. Markup, not editor. There is a huge difference between the two. PDFs and GoodNotes are flattened, so you're not able to edit the text, colors of your digital planner, etc. Sometimes there are things you don't want in your digital planner or things maybe on templates that you want to cover up. Something seriously so easy that you can do is something I call the screenshot trick. I talked about this trick in my digital planning tips and tricks video that I'll have linked below for you by the way, but I wanted to include it again in this video because it's honestly such an easy thing that might be overlooked. So anything you want to easily cover or conceal using the lasso tool in GoodNotes, just lasso the page that you're on. An empty spot, whether that's a blank spot in your digital planner, and then hit take a screenshot and then the share icon, and then copy. Long press and paste your screenshot of the empty spot in your planner, and then use that to cover up any part of your planner that you want. You can tap on the screenshot that you copied using the image tool to adjust the dimensions of the screenshot to ensure it fits exactly over what you want it to. Now this is considered an image though, and there's no locking mechanism or anything like that in GoodNotes, there's no layers. So if you add an image on top of it, write on top of it, type on top of that screenshot, and then use your lasso tool, you'll risk accidentally moving the screenshot underneath whatever you're trying to actually pick up. A workaround for this is to click your lasso tool and then toggle off image anytime you need to move your handwriting or text that was placed on top of that screenshot. If you need to move an image, maybe a sticker or something that you placed on top of the screenshot, click the image icon in the toolbar and then tap on the image that you need to move. Super simple. Similar to the screenshot trick, sometimes it's just easier to kind of white things out. You can just take a white pen color or whatever color you're using to match in your digital planner and then mark out anything that you wanna cover. Similarly to the image tool, you'll risk moving the little white spots that you color throughout your planner. So just toggle off handwriting this time under the lasso tool if you need to move something that was placed on top of your whiteout. Now you're probably thinking, okay, but how can I color match if my planner isn't using a default white paper option? Or maybe you're just trying to match the colors of your digital planner. You'll have a time trying to get those exact hex codes. Some people will screenshot their planner and bring it into another program like Procreate to grab those colors, but there's an even simpler and faster way without ever really needing to leave the GoodNotes app. I guess in a way. So GoodNotes doesn't have a color dropper or an eyedropper to be clear. Instead, with a digital planner open and using your Apple Pencil, swipe from the left corner up and to the right corner of your iPad to take a screenshot. You can then click this multicolored wheel to pull up the colors menu. The eyedropper is this tool in the upper left corner and you can drag this around the screenshot of your planner to pick up the color. Make sure you're under sliders to see the hex code and then you can just tap and hit copy to grab that hex code. Unless you want to keep the screenshot, you can just hit the trash icon to delete it. And then back in GoodNotes, you'll either click your pen or highlighter tool and then that plus icon to add a new color. 
Just long press and paste that hex code in, and then you have an easier and quicker way to pick up colors without ever really leaving the GoodNotes app. Well, kind of. Ever since the introduction of Elements in GoodNotes, you may have seen a lot of creative digital planners and note takers alike that are using them. Elements, in its essence, is just a clipboard manager for whatever you create in GoodNotes. You can save your handwriting, your text, images, and then access that same collection across all of your files within the GoodNotes app. But digital planners tend to use a lot of stickers. There are these unique color or property changing stickers now, and there are just so many different terms that people are calling these. Personally, I've been calling them magic elements because that's what makes the most sense to me. But basically, you can change something about that element, mostly color, and obviously that's not something you were normally able to do with just a still image. And I want to share multiple ways that you can use and create these magic elements. So the most popular way of creating and using magic elements is using fonts. So this is actually a font that I created to look like icons and because it's effectively text, I can change the color of it just as I would be able with text. And I can enlarge it without running into any pixel issues like I would with an image since fonts are vector based and images are raster based. Now you can actually download something called dingback fonts and these are fonts that aren't traditional in the sense of alphabet and punctuation, but icons, flourishes, and whatever else. You can download dingback fonts and use them as elements. To download fonts on your iPad, download the app iFont. There are other font apps out there, but I genuinely think iFont is the best that I've tried, and it's free and I've run into no limitations with it. You can then browse fonts on free font websites like defont.com, which is a very popular and very safe option. But I love buying fonts from places like Creative Market, just keep in mind things like copyright if you intend on using parts of the font in something you're going to sell if you're a seller. It's just a matter of finding a font and then navigating to the downloads folder in your files app. I recommend using Safari for downloading things by the way. Chrome just isn't very friendly when it comes to downloading things. And then you can just share it to iFont using the share icon. Open the iFont app and it will walk you through the rest of the process. But basically, you'll just head over to the settings app on your iPad and install it, type in your passcode, and it will install as a profile on your iPad, and then you'll be able to use this app in any app that accesses these profiles on your iPad. The downside to Magic Elements via fonts, however, is that if you're a creator and you create your own font for people to use as Magic Elements, or use a Dingbat font for the purpose of using it as elements, as digital planning stickers, and then you decide to share it with others or sell it to others, then the person you share it with or the person you sell it to needs access to that font as well. Otherwise, it would just look like a bunch of random letters since they won't have those same fonts installed as you. There's obviously some cons with that, but there are other ways you can create magic elements and that's by drawing or creating elements from the default text options that all GoodNotes users have access to, the regular system fonts. There's some cons with this method too. One of those I found with GoodNotes is that it can be incredibly laggy with hand drawing and hand creating, drawing out these magic elements. Another creative way of using GoodNotes is getting creative with your text boxes. It can be easily overlooked, but you can actually change a lot about the way the text appears when you type in GoodNotes. Of course, you can change the font size, the color, the font itself, the spacing between the lines, but you can also change the text box style by clicking this icon here after you have text selected. They have presets that you can choose from, but under the advanced slider, you can pick background colors, border colors and width, round your corners if you want, toggle shadows on and off. With these options, you can create a number of unique text boxes that kind of look like stickers or buttons to use in your digital planner. And the last thing I wanted to touch on in this video is external linking, which is also new to GoodNotes. GoodNotes recently added the ability to link to external web pages. So while you can't create links between the pages of the document you're in, you can add links for things outside of your document. Your Spotify wrapped playlist, if you're a student, maybe your course website or important study websites. There's just a lot you can do with external links and you can customize the way these links look within your digital planners or notebooks. So to create a link in GoodNotes, you'll start with the text tool. 
While editing a text box, select the text that you want to link to a URL and tap link. Change the URL in the link to field and then just tap outside of the popover to save it. You can also just type out a URL and GoodNotes will automatically turn that into a tappable link. You can use emojis to create links too as well since it's effectively text. And you can also hide the URL by making it the same color as your digital planner background or placing stickers and images on top of it. Anything that you place over top of link in GoodNotes is still tappable, so it's just another creative way of using external links in GoodNotes. There's just a lot of possibilities for links you can link to and then additionally how you can style them. Skillshare is today's video sponsor and something I personally love using and being a part of. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes from watercolor painting to filmmaking, photography, self-care and mental health to piano even. There are just so many classes to dive into and discover. A current class I'm taking is by Peggy Dean called Social Media for the Creative Entrepreneur, Exposure Tips and Pros and Cons. It's so easy to burn out from social media, especially if you're creative trying to share your work with others. And I love Peggy's fresh takes throughout the class and feel better equipped with engaging with my audience through social media. I'm always learning something new and I think Skillshare is such a great personal investment since you're able to freely explore different classes and skills from virtually anywhere. If you're interested in checking out Peggy Dean's class or a number of others on Skillshare, be sure to check out the description of this video. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So those are the many creative ways that you can use GoodNotes for digital planning. I'll also have my digital planning tips and tricks video linked in the description below for you. So if you loved this video, then I know you'll love that one and I'll have that below for you. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't yet. I have a ton of great content on the way and I wouldn't want you to miss out. And don't forget to check out Skillshare that I'll have linked in the description for you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.